So I know with the announcement of the outbreak about influenza, everyone is probably waiting for me to do a video on influenza, but I'm actually not going to do a video as of yet. So I decided to put this video and talk about SBP, spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Grab a piece of paper and let's go. Hello and welcome to MK's Medical Review Series. My name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. This is a series on my YouTube channel where we look at medical topics in depth. Today we're going to be looking at spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon to be receiving notifications of such amazing content every time I post. Remember when you talk about spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, what comes to your mind most of the times will be a background of a patient that has cirrhosis, then eventually they develop this acute infection of the acetic fluid. This is just simply an acute infection of the acetic fluid without any apparent source. Most of the times, the organisms that we actually culture are organisms that are found in the gut, maybe suggesting that there's some translocation that is happening from the gut. We also do see spontaneous bacterial peritonitis in individuals that are on peritoneal dialysis when there's contamination of the dialysate. And this can be seen in these patients. It's a common complication of those patients that have ascites and those that have hepatic cirrhosis. And it's actually quite known to be a complication of patients that have cirrhosis. It's very deadly. It can actually lead to serious sequelae and also can cause death. It's common in children. It can also occur in adults. 70% of patients that actually have spontaneous bacterial peritonitis also have a child perk score that's class C. And remember that if a patient with cirrhosis develops spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, and if they also develop septic shock, then there is a higher risk of them actually dying. Most of the times it's going to be caused by a single organism. And usually it's either a gram-negative bacteria such as an Escherichia coli or Klebsiella pneumoniae, or it could be a gram-negative, or rather gram-positive, this is supposed to be gram-positive here, a gram-positive organism such as a Streptococcus pneumoniae. Usually it's, like I said, just one organism that is causing this. It's once thought that it was just occurring in individuals that have alcoholic cirrhosis, but now we do see it that if anyone has cirrhosis of any cause, they have a risk of developing spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. So we do see it in clinical syndromes that present with ascites. So things like heart failure, things like bad Chiari syndrome, and even children that have nephrosis or even systemic lupus erythematosus, those that have ascites, they are at risk of developing spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Clinical features include, of course, the signs and symptoms of ascites, the abdominal distension, the dullness to percussion, the shifting dullness and your fluid thrills. You also have discomfort, which is going to be diffuse, it's going to be constant, and it's going to be mild to moderate in severity. There may be some signs, such as a fever, malaise. Sometimes they may have encephalopathy, they may have worsening hepatic failure, they may have unexplained clinical deteriorations. They may also have some peritoneal signs, but these are going to be diminished by the presence of the acidic fluid. So they may have abdominal tenderness, they may have rebound tenderness. To make a diagnosis, generally you need to have a high index of suspicion and you should perform a diagnostic paracentesis. So remember that when you're doing your paracentesis and you're transferring your acidic fluid and you're putting it on a blood culture media, you should do this before you incubate it because this will greatly increase the sensitivity of your culture by about 70%. To make a diagnosis, we need about more than 250 cells per microliter of acetic fluid consisting of polymorphonuclear neutrophils. This is important for a diagnosis of spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. And remember that the polymorphonuclear count is a total number of white blood cells in the acetic fluid by the percentage of neutrophils. And remember, most of the times, like I said, you're going to find one single organism. If you find a case where you're culturing a mixture of different organisms, it could mean one of two things. It could either mean that there's some perforation from an abdominal viscous, or it could be contamination of the sample. We also want to get some blood cultures in these particular patients and the baseline investigations. In terms of management, you're going to want to cover them with antibiotics, so preliminaries. You can give them some third-generation cephalosporins like ceftriaxone or cefotaxim, two grams IV every four to eight hours, depending 
as when you're waiting on your culture results, you can change this based to the sensitivity pattern of your culture results. You're going to give these antibiotics for at least five days or at least until when your acetic fluid shows less than 250 polymorphonuclear uh, neutrophils uh, per micro mil of acetic fluid. So your antibiotics are going to increase your chances of survival. And remember that this actually does occur within a year in about 70% of patients that develop spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, they'll have it again. So prophylaxis is actually indicated. We may give them quinolones, norfloxacil in about 400 milligrams once a day. And this antibiotic prophylaxis can also be given to those patients that are at risk of developing SBP. So those that have a risk of hemorrhage, and in addition, when you're managing these patients, also put them on albumin to prevent a hepatorenal syndrome. So you can initially begin with a higher dose of 1.5 grams per kg of 25% albumin. You can give this on day one. Then on day three, you can give one gram per kg um, of 25% albumin, and this is going to reduce the risk of hepatorenal syndrome. I really hope you enjoyed this video on spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the bell notification icon so you never miss on such amazing content every time I post. To Zambia and beyond, my name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. Until next time, bye-bye.